in response to the Turing test, a philosopher named John Searle came up with this Chinese room experiment where he said, basically, there's a person in a room, they speak no Chinese, but they just have like a code to translate Chinese, let's say, into English. And a person outside who speaks Chinese is sending them in messages, and the person in the room is translating them with this sort of code book and sending back responses. Now, the person outside of the room would assume the person in the room knows Chinese. Right? But really, the person is just going along a program acting as if it knows Chinese, but in reality, it doesn't actually have the internal state of knowing, of knowing Chinese. So what that's saying is that even though uh, it, you're fooling the person, they're basically passing a sort of a Turing test about knowing Chinese, they still don't actually know it. Right? And so to get at that is much more difficult. I, and I think passing the Turing test is not enough to prove that a, being, that a AI or you know, a robot or computer has subjective states. And to really answer that question, we need an underlying theory of consciousness. Well, dot, 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 is there one? Yes, there's one. There's a candidate well, there's a couple. One. Christoph has a favorite. Why don't you talk about it? There, <laughs> there are literally yes. two, and there's like well, there's there more. Well, there are a few theories. Uh, well, it depends what you mean by theories. There are a few scholars that have sort of systematically amassed evidence from the neuroscientists, from philosophy, from computer science, from information theory to construct a theory of consciousness. The most popular one, or the, the, the most interesting one, the most fully, fully developed, is one by an American neuro psychiatrist and scientist called Giulio Tononi. It's called the Integrated Information Theory of Consciousness. And it essentially says, reduced in very, very, very brief form, that consciousness arises out of complexity. If you have a very complex thing, like, like the human brain, three pounds of human brain is by far the most complex piece of organized matter in the universe, in the known universe, okay? The claim is that any piece of highly organized excitable matter like the brain will have experience associated with it. Now, it has to be organized, it has to be complexity in a particular way. You just can't throw neurons at it. It has to be organized in a particular way. But if you have these highly complex systems, they will exude, as it were, they will have experience, whether it's a very simple system or it's a very big system like the human brain. So there's some implications of this theory. So Many. it lead, yeah, and it leads to you know something called panpsychism, which means that anything that any system that has some degree of complexity can have some degree of consciousness. Like it's a property of the universe, right? Like gravity, it just exists in any system, right? So that means that you know algae, yeah. Can, in principle, in, in principle, it may be true that it feels like something to be an algae. But it, know how to I think it that takes right away the, on our, what we think of as consciousness, like the subjective experiences we have. If, it, you, if you break it down to like, oh, that algae has a little bit of it or whatever, it kind of takes away from the fundamental. Well, but that's also the thing about life. We used to think we are unique, and then we realized, right. no, there are other creatures out there that are like us, and they also evolved. We are part of that, of that grand continuum, from algae to monkeys to us. So it may well also be true that with respect to conscious experience, there are many conscious experience is much more widespread than we think, and this is a very ancient insight. As Heather mentioned, this is known as pan-psychism. Pan, everywhere, psyche, the soul. That may be the universe is ensouled. Maybe consciousness is in many more things than we like to be believe, including possibly in some of our simulacra, some of our artifacts, maybe in the internet, maybe in robots, maybe in things like Ava.